Hello and welcome back to Protoss Answers, where three certified experts talk about uh, Protoss problems, your Protoss problems put into the Avid Facebook uh, user forum. Uh, my name is Anders and with me today is Andy Hagerman uh, from Avid. Woohoo! How are you doing, baby? <laughs> doing good. Uh, Dave is not here today, so I'm trying to take over his duties of presenting the show. You're doing so good. Oh, thank you. Don't thank let you. me distract you. You're doing fine. Yeah. So just for your information, this is take number 12 now. Uh, so I hope <laughs> I don't screw it up right now. Uh, OK, today we have a question from Alexandra. I'll read his question for you. I'm curious what PT settings are global versus ses session specific. I'm coming from Logic, where there is a specific project settings set of preferences versus the global preferences. Does anyone have the resources uh, on figuring this out? And Alexandre, you've come to the right place. We've got the resources for you. Andy, uh, can you uh, yes. can you start by explaining like uh, what's the different resources that that we have available to us in Pro Tools? So, so basically, it falls into two categories: um, things that you want to apply to your session mm -hmm. and to have be settings that are recalled every time you open anything up on that session. For the most part, that's going to be in your Pro Tools Preferences dialog box, which you're going to find in the Setup menu. So you go to Setup menu, uh, open up Preferences. In the Preferences dialog box, almost all, but not all, of these settings here are applied to your system and any session that you launch on it. Right. So, so for example, if Anders was to give me a session, you know, he has his own preferences. That's the way he wants Pro Tools to behave on his system but I've got something different because I want it to behave differently on my system. That's where I set those particular settings in the preferences, which is not what you're asking, by the way. I'm just saying there's two different places you can do it. For, for settings that are specific to your project, which Pro Tools calls a session, it's still in the setup menu, but it's session setup, which is command two if you're on uh, a Mac or it's control two. Uh, if you're on a Windows machine and and basically this is where you're going to be able to set up a lot of things and and by the way just for more advanced users it's a window that some people don't know how much it can do so there's a lot of uh, there's three different tiers to this so so Anders just go ahead and close that bottom tier or yep. there, yeah close this let's start basic so this is something everybody has uh, you can set your sample rate you can set your audio format interleave bit depth all that stuff now you can change all of these settings except for one which one is it anders uh, it's probably sample rate because that would mess everything up pretty badly that's complete it's completely right so 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 the sample rate is is not a choice it's an indicator so the sample rate is is based upon the sample rate of the session and that's not something you can mix and match but you can mix and match file types so you can have you can have a uh, broadcast wave and be recording a broadcast wave, and then you can change your mind and say, I want to record AFF and just change it. And then from that point on, it's going to record AFF files or consolidate or whatever. So you can mix and match all of these different things, um, you know, bit depth, whether they're interleaved or not, the audio format. Um, and and you've got your session start time, which is your SMPTE start offset um you've got your session length time which is usually 24 hours and that's that's completely fine your frame rates and so on and so forth oh there's one other thing that you can't change and that's your system delay and your system delay is actually kind of a cool little thing that's telling you how much round trip latency you have so the the entire latency not round trip but the, the entire latency of your session um including plugins and including your interface is represented there so so when anders hears his session he's hearing it 139 samples later than it actually plays which is not a problem but it is giving you information in case you want to do things like external laybacks and stuff like that and if anders was to add more plugins into that session that number would change down to the sample we keep it sample accurate but that's that's uh that's but an indicator it's not Andy, you... this is not entirely true uh if you're not using avid hardware is it i mean does it does it know no, it's not. the the latent round trip latency of non avid hardware so so um so you bring up a good point um so that system delay is is basically going it takes into account the latency of the session itself, including the uh, the plugins and all that, and then the 
Avid interface that you have attached. Now, I don't have an Avid, well, I do have an Avid interface, it's just not attached right now. But if you don't have an Avid interface, um, it goes to the, um, the device that it's designed to emulate. So it, different third-party interfaces will, will report different values. So there might be a few samples off. It's not usually a problem, mm. um, but you're 100% you're right, 0% wrong, that if you're not using an Avid interface, that number won't be, or may not be entirely correct. It also is not tremendously important. Yeah. Um, unless you're you're laying back to uh, a tape deck, and in, in that case, you know you want to be sample accurate if you're doing yeah. an external layback. And for systems like that, usually they are they are using Avid interfaces. Yeah, totally. Uh, now there is a section here where which on my sure. system right now doesn't really show a whole great deal, and that's the sync setup. Which of course, if you've got a connected uh, sync peripheral like the sync x or sync hd but i don't right now because i'm traveling uh though i only have my small laptop with me here so but this is where you would set up your different sync options for the avid sync x or sync hd and this is for you know these are for post-production systems mostly yes um, not entirely exclusive but but these and the time code settings which is what you're going to show it in here those those bottom two sections primarily apply to um, synchronization issues in a post-production setting when you're taking uh, time code and, and clocking from from an external source yeah uh, great stuff there so these travel only with this setting uh, session That's and right. are are basically setting up your session so what what settings in the in the setup preferences are are session specific um, what are uh, system specific? Um, I honestly, I would have to Google it <laughs> because, <laughs> because most of them are are um, are system specific. There are a few that are session specific. One of them that both you and I know is the MIDI default through instrument. Mm -hmm. Um, will change by by session, um, but there's a handful of other ones. And, and if you if you do a Google search, it'll it'll tell you which ones travel by this by the system, and which ones travel by the session. Um, most of them, I you know, I when actually in, when in just update. come up with that one, uh, the MIDI default through instrument setting. I can't think of another one that is. Uh, All right, session you're specific. forcing me. To, you're forcing me to look it up. Okay, hold on. <laughs> By the way, while uh, Andy is uh, looking this up, uh, I can tell you something else, and that is, uh, these preferences are not system specific, as we say, system specific, but they're actually user specific. Meaning, if you and some other user have different logons on your computers, you will actually have your own settings and those will be retained, meaning that you can have separate set settings. If I and Andy were to work on the same machine, we would use two separate uh, profiles to log on to our computer so that I could retain my settings and Andy would retain his. So here, so I'm, so there's, there's actually a few more than I thought. Um, your default color coding oh. is, is, is uh, session specific. Um, yeah, on of the course. Operation, yeah, you're right. On the operation tab, um, your custom shuttle lock speed, mm. which is interesting. I didn't know that. Um, your, uh, on the, in the, da, da, there's nothing in editing. In the mixing tab, your, uh, your preference for co uh, coalescing trim automation. Oh, yeah, 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 right. Yeah. Um, doesn't you know that these aren't things that I, I change a lot anyways um in the in the processing uh, section convert imported wave files to aescbu uh 31 that's interesting that's that's uh i i didn't know that one but uh, the the first checkbox in the import section of the processing yeah. that's session by session oh um wow. Let's see. In MIDI, um, automatic autom automatically create click track in new sessions. That's a session based one. Yep. Um, let's see. And then that's it. I mean, there's there's a you know that those are the main ones. Yeah. Um, but the rest of them are are system system wide. And and to be quite honest, you're not probably going to get caught on on the preferences that I just cited. So so the fact that some of them are, are session specific and other ones are system specific generally does not present problems in the real world. Yeah, totally. And uh, I mean, uh, Andy, thanks for clearing that up. I 
I was unaware about a couple of these, but they totally make right. sense. By the way, you mentioned uh, one uh, preference that I think might be a very underused function that people I've seen nagging about this on uh, user forums and stuff like that. And that would be, why doesn't Protos have a click track or a metronome when you just start uh, Protos, which is something that you might experience, uh, Alexandra, coming from Logic. And of course, you can have one in every session when you start them. And that is in the Setup Preferences MIDI tab, automatically create a click track in new sessions. So enable that one and hit OK key, and you will always have a metronome if you like those. If you like those, right. So there's a couple for, for music production that that I, you know, if I if I'm writing music all the time, and if that if I'm in that kind of mode, I'll usually have that one checked. Um, the other one that I'll do usually is in the processing tab, I believe, mm -hmm. um, which is the um, all tracks default to tick based. Um, so that one, uh, sorry, the uh, tracks default to tick based, mm -hmm. and enable elastic audio on all new tracks. So those those are our preferences that I tend to enable. Yeah. On on system you know, when I'm when I'm writing music on a system, mm -hmm. but you know you can always change that stuff as you go, uh, which is what they're there for to be changed, right? You, you have the for, option yeah. to change them. Yeah, great yeah. stuff. I hope this cleared uh, every question mark you had, Alexandra. And if not, let us know. Andy, is there anything that we need to to add while discussing this? I don't know if I want to lob this hand grenade. But why not? I'm really curious. Um, <laughs> and, and, just, and just go ahead and, and if you could please, yeah, uh, open up the session setup window if you would. Session yeah. setup dialog box. Setup. There's session. there's one there's one uh, aspect that we didn't talk about, mm -hmm. and that is pan depth. Oh, nice one. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Head grenade tossed. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. <laughs> So the pan depth, uh, to put this simply, is um, when you have a stereo file, basically uh, uh, what would happen if there was no pan depth is when you would pan the, the, the signals, both the signals from the left and to the, the right into the center, you would get a louder signal. And uh, the pan depth lets you control the amount of attenuation that Pro Tools will pull down uh, how many decibels uh, softer or, or lower volume uh, the track should have when you play back and both of the panners are in the center. That's right. That's perfect. That's a great example. Um, there are different pan depth choices. And here's the reason why. Is that back in the day of, of analog consoles, the, that amount of attenuation was wired into the console. I mean, it was it was there was no digital setting that you could change. It was it was built in, right? But it's um, still built so, in in all analog consoles. There is no analog console where you can change this, right? It's built yeah, into it's, it. Yeah, it's it still is. And so, if you want to think of it, this is a way that you can, in in this one aspect only, um, emulate the behavior of another console. So so the the golden rule here is that the the deeper the attenuation, the more um, the more for a acoustically treated room this is. So um, minus two point five is for your you know your your consumer level, um, not necessarily the most professional applications in and designed to be mixed in untreated rooms. And that was um, I'll, I'll, I'll I'll test you, Anders. What DAW that you've used? Yeah used two minus 2.5 db so a uh, pro tools used to have minus 2.5 i think it was up until pro tools 7 or maybe even 8 i'm not 100 percent sure is am i correct you are possibly correct you're missing one thing okay pro tools le oh yeah had a minus 2.5 db pan depth and Pro Tools HD, which was what you know, what the, mm -hmm. what the you know the, the the one that Anders you were probably using, had a minus three, which is why you could do a mix and it would sound absolutely perfect in Pro Tools LE, yeah. and it would sound slightly slightly different um, in an HD system because 
you, they, they had different panned ups, and back in those days, you couldn't change it. And and of um, course, different uh, architecture in the the way that the sound was uh, summed as sure. well. But yeah, totally. Sure. Yeah, that must have um, been weird. <laughs> it was. Um, here's a bit of trivia for you. And minus four point five. That's your your mostly British consoles. Yeah. Um, the SSLs and your Neves. And then minus six is one that is 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 more theoretical than than. Um, than practical i don't think as far as i'm aware there's no console that's ever been built with a minus 6 db pan depth um and and basically what minus 6 db minus 6 db is perfect summing right yeah. there that is that is if you take two equal signals together they will bump up by 6 db and this basically compensates for all of that so in what case anders would you use minus 6 db uh, I mean, if I really need a sine wave to play a sine wave to to play out in the exact uh, exact same loudness uh, through the entire panning spectrum, that would be it, I guess. Uh, I don't know. Very Test, very close. Te testing stuff, I guess. I don't know. Mono compatibility. Yeah, yeah, sure. That's what it brings so, you, so, right? Because it would so, be a hundred percent alike in mono right. and stereo. Yeah. So, so what you can find is if you use any of these other pan depths, which by the way, there's no right or wrong pan depth. There's really, mm -hmm. it's, it is at this point a matter of personal preference. But why my personal preference is minus six is because I know that if I was to sum everything together and make a mono version, I'm going to lose ambience. I'm going to lose all that stuff. But the one thing that won't happen is everything panned in the center won't get louder. Yeah. So uh, it's not my, do, do you really uh, mix at minus six? Yes. Oh wow! Cool. Um, I yeah. I mean, there's like like I said, if mm. if it sounds good, mm. it's fine. There's yeah. no there's no. It doesn't have to do with room calibration. It has nothing to do with anything. It's just how is Pro Tools going to sound yeah. when you when you when move, you pan, when you pan stuff, stuff to the middle? You know that's that's it. Um, and so yeah, so I I mix up minus six. Oh wow! Wow! Cool. I didn't know that. Yeah, uh, Andy. Uh, as always, I learned so much from you. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, it's probably deeper than people want to go into in, in, in session specific settings, but I, it did occur to me that that was one that we didn't talk about. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm sure there are a bunch of nerds out there that are, that might find this helpful as well. So if, I think I'm talking to one. <laughs> uh, yeah. So if you found this uh, useful, uh, please hit the like button and also subscribe to our channel if you haven't done already, uh, because uh, that would help us a lot. And when we're talking about helping us, it would be wise for you to run into protosensors.com and also hit the subscribe button over there because uh, Andy will send you an email each week and you'll be notified wh when stuff happens, uh, which is always, I mean, your letters are amazing, Andy. Thank you so much for those. And if you want to help out even more and gain more, a lot more, uh, you should sign up for the Protos Answers Inner Circle, which is not the same thing as Protos Inner Circle, uh, but we've got a very small little group there going with master classes each month and a lot of other benefits. Check that out at protosanswers.com. Uh, Andy, thank you so much for today. And uh, Brilliant. Thank you. And uh, we hope to see you next week again. See ya. Take care, guys.